Clippers or spinners I will be using in this video are from the top the 24 gram Westin Sole Peelin. A great sand ill imitation and it's recommended to retrieve this lure fast with pauses otherwise known as spin stops. Next is the 26 gram Westin F360. A fish imitation lure such as a sprat or a small pilchard or a small herring. It's recommended to retrieve this lure at a medium to fast pace with a few pauses. Designed in Scandinavia for sea trout fishing, along with other sea trout lures on the market, they are proving to be very good for our bass. Notice they come with two split rings instead of the usual one. Sea trout are notorious for coming off the hook, and this is said to help prevent that because the hook fish cannot put so much leverage on the lure. That's great because bass are also good at throwing the hook. I've done a couple of bass videos now using various metal lures and they can be very useful. They cast much further than soft lures or plugs if you need distance. They cast better when it's windy and they're great for surf fishing. Apart from that, they're a reasonable cost. The video is shot over two sessions fishing a very rough ground rock mark made up of rocks, gullies, kelp and weed. Right, I'm at the mark. At the moment it's about two and a half hours before high water and I'm going to fish up to high water and, and just after. I've got a nice spring tide at the moment, a rising spring tide, so there should be plenty, plenty of current. There are currents that are generated at this mark. The rocks, the rocks are all covered now that usually expose at low water. Now although I've got, I've got no wind as such, there's a little bit of a breeze but I've actually got a bit of a swell com coming in and, and the reason for that is that the last couple of days we've had strong winds and so it's had a bit of a stir up and it hasn't quite set settled down yet so there's a bit of a swell coming in but also because of those strong winds that we've had and the stir up they actually the water's a little bit murky it's not too bad but it's a little bit murky not as clear as it normally is but that's fine I've caught bass before when it's been a little bit murky so I'm not too worried about that. So I've got the the sand eel imitation lure on, the salt pillin. We'd, we'd, we'd give, give that a go but yeah I'm, I'm, I quite like the look at look condi the conditions with a little bit of a chop, a little bit of a swell even, even though there's no no wind so so fingers crossed. So the idea as always when uh, I go lure fishing is not to cast in the same spot all the time is to try and fan my casts out to cover as much ground as possible but basically at this mark although the bass many of the takes are quite close in let's say within uh, from right to the shoreline here to to let's say 30 40 yards they will also take at maximum distance and that's because of the ground because basically it's all a reefy area so they can take anywhere anywhere so I'm going to basically just cast it this lure as far as as far as I can now I'm just going to do a medium retrieve as I mentioned that they recommend for sea trout to, to to reel this particular lure in quite quickly. I'm going to do a medium, a medium retrieve uh, with, with, occasion, with the occasional pause, what they call the spin stop. You'll notice there I'm holding the rod tip down low. Now that's to basically to make sure that I work the lure right to the edge because of that fact that they can take at the last minute rather than having it high and the, the lure maybe maybe coming up too early keep it low when I can sometimes I have to raise the rod tip up if I if I'm going over one of the rocks and the water's shallow to work it over the rock but basically the idea is to keep working it as best I can right to the edge I've got a little bit of a problem I can't I can't get too close to the edge at the moment because of the the swell coming in and, and occasionally it's not huge swell nothing to worry about but occasionally a swell will come in and so I ca I've got to stand stand back a little bit. Yeah, it's it's, it's quite it's quite murky. And normally, normally when I'm lure fishing, here I, I can I start to see the lure when it's when it's coming close to uh, 
close to shore but uh, I am struggling to see it so so it is murky but like I've said I've caught I've caught uh, particularly when the lure has got a bit of a action to it it will it will create it'll cre it'll create some vibration like this lure has it's got it's got that action so the fish will still be able to uh, detect it even if it's not even if it's not crystal clear water well a bit of a bit of loose weed in the water when I was walking here I, I noticed because because of that rough weather that we, we had I noticed on the on the shoreline there's a absolute mass of weed I'm just hoping when the tide I'm just hoping when the tide moves up and, and starts picking up that weed it, it doesn't start drifting my way because there's masses of it on the beaches uh, if it does it'll make it you know, it'll make it really different difficult but at the moment there's just there's just small bits of weed so it's not it's not too bad well there's no sign of fish at the moment I'm not I'm not getting any indication sometimes you you'll get knocks you get little knocks tugs that indicates that maybe there's something around even if it's not not bass but nothing at the moment but that's fine oh, I've still got plenty of time of the, of the rising tide this mark is one of the uh, is basically a a high what I call a high water bass mark I've got I would say probably 80% of the marks I fish for bass fish bass around the low water period I'm talking say three out three hours either side of low but this one this one's a high water basically because of the features the features that get covered that get covered up at high water so the fish can fish can move in move into those features so yeah this one is more really it's, it's three hours either side of high right interesting what see what this is I'm not sure to be honest it is a bass I wasn't sure I wasn't sure with that one usually usually with the bass you, you can sort of have a tell straight away that it is but I wasn't sure with this one there you go may not be a huge bass but at least it shows these sea trout lures are good for bass as well right I'll quickly get this unhooked well I quickly gave that a measure I mean I I I know it's an undersized bass but this just 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 interest for you really and it goes it goes it goes 40 centimeters and we'll get it back it's certainly lively enough now I'll give it a bit of time in this rock pool uh, to recover and I'll get it back but we'll have a look at it And it's gone. Well, that's great. Well, that's a that's a good start. Let's see if I can pick up another one. And that just a few people have asked me in the past about lure fishing in murky water. Now, I know that it's not really muddy water, but it but for Cornwall, um, it's a lot it's a lot murkier than it than it normally is. It's normally a lot clearer uh, clearer than this. So uh, you can, and I've had it before, I've, I've caught bass in actually murkier water than this, quite muddy water. 
with with a lure on with a lure that's got a bit of vibration so I, I think to a limit of clarity I think you know if your lure is being drawn in an area where there are a bass and even though it's not ultra clear I, they 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 can detect it they can detect it even if maybe it's low visibility hence you can go out at night in the pitch black and catch bass and although a lot of people use white lures at night which is a good idea I've caught bass at night with with coloured lures coloured lures as well so uh, but admittedly those lures have got a bit of vibration okay so how I was working that lure I would call it a medium retrieve about like that I mean I would call fast that and slow that so a medium retrieve but with plenty of pauses so it sinks this lure this lure quite works quite shallow so you can afford to, to give it those pauses as is recommended for this lure what they call the spin stop now the other interesting thing about that that actually took, took at more or less maximum casting distance it was just a few turns of the reel and it and it took it so as I as I said earlier that at this particular mark many many times you get them take at your feet down here but but also you you will get them a, a lot further out it, it just depends on on where they are whether they're close in or whether they're whether they're further out particularly as it's all reef it's all reef uh, rocks and gullies and, and kelp and weed so basically they they could they could be anywhere just just had a just had a fish there I just had a fish there follow it right to the edge it just just turned away at the last minute so that's an example and a tip for tip for you beginners to to bass fishing not just bass fishing it happens with pollock and it will happen with mackerel is if you can keep winding right to the edge if you can sometimes you can't sometimes you've got to uh, lift the rod up and draw and lift it and lift it out but if you can right to the edge it may only be a tiny bass but e even the decent sized ones will do that they'll they'll literally take it just just as it's coming up uh, and you're just about to take it out of the water again this one again obviously it's undersized but again this one this one took it right at right at the edge okay we'll get it back Well, that's it for this session but I've got some really good tides over the next few days so I'm going to try and take advantage of that and come back again and see if I can catch a few more on the sea trout lures. Well I'm back again for another session and I've got very different conditions than I had at the last session. The water is it's still not crystal clear as clear as it normally is but it's clearing up basically because it's calm right down but I've got very calm conditions and it's very bright conditions now this is a late afternoon into the early evening tide now normally for bass fishing when it's really calm and really bright I wouldn't bother coming at this time I would probably wait when the tide suits and come uh, very early morning let's say darkness into dawn and the first few hours of sunlight or very late evening but because I've got such a good tide a strong spring tide and this mark does generate good currents on a spring tide 
because of that and also at this mark I've got some deep gullies that I can cast into so I've got a bit of depth I, I'm gonna get I'm gonna give it a go and see if I can find a fish I, mu I must admit in these really bright calm conditions like this I'm not hopeful but, we'll, but because of because of those factors we'll we'll give it a try so I'm I've got the sand hill imitation on again we'll, we'll start with that and may may have a change later but we'll, we'll see how we do with this one well the conditions are are changing changing a little bit now I'm pleased to say there's a little bit a little bit of a chop on the water now and also I've got some cloud coming in from off off the land so it's a little bit darker on the water so I'm just hoping that cloud continues to come over over the water darken things up a bit and uh, I'm feeling I'm feeling a little bit more hopeful now well nothing so far n not a sign of anything no followers no knocks nothing so what I'm gonna do I'll have a change we'll try the the F360 we'll pop that on see if that uh, see if that makes any difference but it's just a case of it's not easy today in, on this session being being so bright but the good news is it looks like there's a bit of cloud coming over from the land I'm really hoping that happens I've got two out two hours to high water really hoping that happens because it will darken things up a bit that might might make a difference Now this one casts further than the other lure, also being a bit heavier, it works a bit deeper. Now what I'm doing with this is, is again it's just a steady retrieve and with this lure when you're retrieving it you can actually you can actually see the see the rod tip rattling and you can feel it. So I'm just retrieving it enough where I get I can get that similar to the way I'd fish a Dexter wedge where I can just feel the the vibration of the lure. So probably just a medium retrieve. Right, I'm in. Yep, this is a bass. Definitely. Definitely a bass. Well that's great, I'm pleased to show that both of those lures catch. They're only a small one again, this one goes just over 38. Um, but never mind, that, that's fantastic. I'm really pleased because I was not at all confident about the conditions. Um, but there is, there, is a bit of a, there is a bit of a chop on the water now. And so it's a little bit better than when I first started. There you go another lovely bass right get it back
Well, I'll carry on with that one for a bit now. Give it, give it a a few more goes, and then and then maybe we'll see. Uh, maybe change back to the other one. For those of you that are, are new to spinning, just going into spinning or lure fishing, and I, and I know there are a, a few of you that contact me via the comments about it that you're just getting into lure fishing. Just going to give you a little tip here about casting. And what that is, is to try and make sure that when you cast a lure out and you start to retrieve it in, you avoid reeling in slack line onto the reel. What happens when you cast out? You cast out, particularly if you've got a wind, particularly if you've got a side wind, you cast out and when the, hit, the lure hits the water, there's usually a bow, a lot of slack line. Now, if you immediately engage the reel and you start reeling straight, aw straight away, you start reeling that slack line on, what can happen later, it can cause you to get line twist. Now, if you don't know what line twist is, it's basically the line gets twisted and what happens, you then cast out and it all twists up twist up into a ball and sometimes it can catch on the rings as it's going through and you get a break off other times it just goes off off with this great ball of twisted line and and if it's braid like this sometimes it's virtually impossible to untangle okay so what you do you cast out now I'm watching the lure and as soon as the lure hits the water I stop the line, I stop the line from, from leaving the reel, then pull the rod right back and what I'm trying to do is take up the slack and then I start feeling the tension of the lure and I can move the, lure, the rod forward and I'm, basically what I'm trying to do is always reel the line on under tension so I'm not reeling a loose line on which can, which can cause, the, cause that line twist. So I'll do that again in a moment. But just to explain again, you cast out, you watch the lure, you see it hit the surface, you immediately stop the line coming off the reel, particularly if you've got a side wind. Because if you don't stop it, what will happen is, it'll just keep taking line off the reel. And when you start reeling, you, you're reeling in a load of slack before you start engaging the, the weight of the lure and reeling the line in under tension. So we do that again. So I cast out, the lures hit the water, now I stop the line from coming off the spool, engage the bow, pull the rod back to take, try and take up the slack. I can feel the tension now and I can move forward and I'm reeling under tension. It's worse when you've got a side wind, at the mo moment I've got no wind so it's not so bad but when you've got a side wind that's really important to stop that line coming off the spool as soon as it hits the water. As I said, you're just, otherwise you're just going to end up reeling a load of slack it, a load of slack onto the reel, which, which can cause problems. Okay, now the, the reason, just say that again, the reason that I pull, pull the rod back like that is the lures hit the surface, I've stopped the line coming off the spool, engaged it, and if I pull it, if I just reel from here, I'll reel on slack. But by pulling the rod back like this, it helps to take up some of that slack to reel as least amount of slack on the on the spool as possible. As I said, till I feel that tension. Just a just a little tip, for, a tip for you beginners about casting when you're casting lures. So back, take up the slack quickly. Feel the tension, move it, move it forward. And now I can feel, I can feel the, the draw, the tension of the lure going through the water. That fish that I caught, that took it at maximum casting distance. It didn't take it close. It took it, took it a quite, a, quite a way out. So it just goes to show that sometimes, although most of our bass are caught close to shore, Sometimes it is an advantage to be able to cast a distance and this is where these metal lures give you that, they give you that distance that you can't, there's no way you can, you can get with, with a soft plastic or, you can, or a plug. Even the longest casting plugs, they won't, they won't as cast 
anywhere near as far as some of these some of these good metal lures that, that we can get now. Oh well, that's the way it goes. Yeah, I mean it was a undersize anyway, but never, but never mind. At least there's, at least there's still uh, one or two fish around. Yeah, it can. I mean it can happen. It's a just a little bit tricky landing the fish here. Um, you can't just sort of pull them straight in uh, but never mind actually uh, talking about sea trout being good at throwing a hook and why they why they design these lures in a way with the extra sp split ring to try and help keep hold of the fish and maybe the the line through lures that they use for the sea trout fishing bass bass are pretty good at it as well that's not the first fish I've lost bass fishing close to shore and it, and it certainly won't be the last yep a bass Again, caught a long way out. Right, I mustn't lose this one. It's that pullback that you get. We got it. Yes, yeah, when you it's, it's when you get the, it's when you get that undertow. When you get that pullback um, from at the edge that's a, that's a, a time when you could could lose them right let's get it in a pool well I measured that one it's 39 so they're all a oh dear well that one went 39 so can't find, can't find the the bigger fish but having fantastic sport with these let's get it back and away it goes and I just got, I just got an absolute drenching I was trying to get it down in a rock pool and then a wave come come in and wonderful. I'm absolutely drenched. Never mind, it's worth it's worth it. I was just about to say before before hooking that that fish that the conditions are much more much better now. Got got a bit of chop, but the sun the sun is starting to disappear to my right here uh, behind a cloud and, and get and getting lower. So there's a there's a little, that little bit of darkness on the water. We're still about half an hour before high water. 
unfortunately I've got I've got to go around about high water but I think uh, it's a pity really because I think if, if I could stay and fish part of the ebb with the sun going down um, I might I might pick up a few more well I'm coming to the end of my session now unfortunately I've, I've got to go but really pleasing to to show these these uh, metal lures these spinners basically designed for sea trout fishing in Scandinavia that they're really good for for the bass fishing here but also to once again sort of emphasize that how metal lures really are really are useful at times for our our bass fishing you don't always have to use your more widely used plugs and and your soft plastics of course though they, they they're a great as well and in actual fact it's debatable really if if over these two sessions if i was using i don't know some well a well-known soft plastic or well-known plug would i would i have done any better i'm oh just had a knock then i'm not actually not actually sure that i would yeah okay all the the bass were small bass but it is just <laughs> there's just so many of them around it's i'm just oh oh there we go there we go and i was just about to um call it a day oh dear i wish i could stay now actually this is a mackerel i think is it no it's is it a bass no it's no it is a bat no it's a mackerel actually it's a fairly decent mackerel by the looks of it Do you know what? I, I'm not sure. I can't see it well enough. Yeah, no, it is a mackerel. Do you know? I was thinking. I was thinking. No, no mackerel. I mean, usually you fish. You fish these type of lures, and uh, you. This is a decent mackerel. Yeah, it's a decent mackerel. Yeah, you think. Oh well, I pick. I might pick up a few mackerel. So I was I was surprised that I hadn't I hadn't already. But so I'm I'm actually really pleased to to get a mackerel because this one if I can get it in without losing it. This one's coming home. Yeah, that, that that's a nice mackerel. Really pleased actually to catch that. Yeah, as, as I was saying before I was interrupted. Um, do you know what? <laughs> I, I can't remember what I was saying. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, that these metal lures, really worth it. And these, these sea trout lures, designed for sea trout, are... Oh dear, now look what's happened. Oh, I don't know how I'm trying, trying to make these videos. Uh, oh, good, it's out. Yeah, the, these, these sea trout lures really are designed for sea trout. Really do, really do work well for, for the bass in this country. And as you can see, for the mackerel as well. So once again, I hope you found that useful and many many thanks for watching